After the huge success with the interactive exhibit of the GSLV Mark III at the Vikram Sarabhai Space Exhibition Ahmedabad, Museum Interactives has now come up with a smaller but improved version of the same. This dynamic model, which comes with a trilingual audio narration, measures 9 feet when displayed. It has an optional travel case of 8 by 3 by 2 feet which is custom designed such that the complete model collapses into the box neatly and smoothly. Right from unboxing till the point of setting up, the complete procedure is a breeze. Once the lid is opened by turning the key, the rocket model as well as the monitor kiosk are deployed effortlessly with the help of gas springs and hydraulic dampers. The empty box is used as the exhibit pedestal. Another interesting feature of the exhibit is the custom-designed spot lamps mounted behind the monitor cover. Coming to the actual exhibit, it comprises of an excellent software system which can dynamically control the lights of the GSLB rocket. The interface comprises of three languages which can be suited to other languages. A visitor with the help of the software can interact with the standalone model and explore any part of the rocket by just tapping on any section of the same shown on the screen. As an enhancement to the existing GSLV model, audio describing each part of the GSLV has also been included. GSLV Mark III GSLV Mark III is a three-stage heavy lift launch vehicle developed by ISRO. Hydrogen Tanki Tunnel Hydrogen ke je ocha 253 centigrade par sangrah karvama aavyo chhe In cases where there is a large audience or crowd a provision for an auto play light and sound show has also been provided which in turn takes the visitor on an automated guided tour to the GSLV To make it easy for the volunteer to explain any additional specifics a microphone facility has also been included Overall, the Mini GSLV model is a very popular travelling exhibit of the VSSE Ahmedabad. For details, please contact www.museuminteractives.in. Hi, I'm uh, Sudhir Rao. I'm the Managing Director of WorldServe Education Bangalore and I'm here to talk to you today about Beyond 2016. Before I start off with uh, talking to you about Beyond 2015, let me tell you a bit about our organization, that's WorldServe Education. We started off in 2009 uh, with just two students. It's 2015 now and we've catered to around 1,500 students in all, in total. Uh, what do we do? The basic idea of WorldServe Education is to mold students, to bring their ideas into reality. So that's the main idea of uh, WorldServe Education. Uh, students come up with set of ideas. This year we had uh, started to make a cost effective 3D printer, a conveyor belt for farmers to aggregate their produce and also a video processing system farmers could detect pests in their plants uh, just using a camera and also using a robot. Uh, communication projects also were done this year and the basic thing is at the end of the day the students have a lot of fun and a sense of accomplishment. That's because the students do the projects themselves and we are here just to guide them. So we are there always 24 by 7 helping them out, but it's the students who really do the work. Minds of education, well, uh, lots of posters here saying, do you have a new spark to do something new? Yes, that's absolutely, absolutely true. Because if you have some idea of your own and you don't know what to do, how to take the lead, then you are at the right place at World of Education. The guidance that we get at World Serve is simply, you know, marvelous. At every step of the project, they guide you with the correct steps. In initially, they you also get a few training sessions on the user interfaces, the tools that are used, and um, the languages that are used, so that you can familiarize yourself with syntaxes. 
So it's not only about the projects which the students do, it's also the IEEE papers which they write after the project is completed. We have around 26 IEEE papers as of now to our name and the credit completely goes to the students. Uh, they go to international conferences, they give their presentation over there and they get appreciated and that gives a lot of acknowledgement and boost to their confidence to our students. And that's why uh, we have a very happy set of students over the past six years. Along with projects, uh, WorldServe is also um, uh, dealing with workshops. We conduct these workshops on image processing, video processing at several universities and colleges across Bangalore. Uh, one of the ones which we completed recently was in 2014 and that was Beyond. We did Beyond at a college called MDID Bangalore and the response there was amazing. Hi, I'm Rasha. I was part of the teaching staff of Beyond 2014, the workshop held at Sir MIT College Bangalore. The whole idea of the workshop was to make the students develop their own natural user interface. So we taught them the basics of MATLAB engineering and then the concepts of image processing and video. Then we asked the students to come up with ideas for the MUI concept. And they came with amazing ideas like in order, like showing the numbers to control the speed of the fan or just waving hand to change the status of speed. Overall, it was an amazing experience for us as well as them. I would actually want to sum up what we did actually in these two days. Actually, we started from this Marconi uh, Hall itself, learning from the very basics what exactly is image processing, how your analog camera works to digital camera works, what is MATLAB, how you have implemented MATLAB, uh, taking another further step, how Simulink works, how the uh, Simulink you have implemented in uh, real time using your hand gestures. Yes, the heart of this entire uh, workshop is because of uh, World's of Organization, I'm very grateful that I'm also a part of it. I am doing a project under Mr. Uh, Sudhir sir and uh, I would like, like to thank Mr. Sudhir sir. We also received a very good response from the principal as well as even the head of department from MBID College. So I'm sure the whole uh, workshop would have been uh, very interesting. So I thank uh, Sudhir and Steve for coming over here and uh, giving uh, such a good presentation. And it was then when uh, we realized why don't we take it worldwide? And that was the reason why we thought of Beyond 2015. The main idea of Beyond 2015 is to cater to a larger set of students, probably the whole world, and give to them a taste of natural user interfaces. We're sure you're going to love it, and we're just excited to start off with Beyond 2015. Hope to see you there very soon. Thank you very much for your time. So um, just waiting for a few more minutes so that uh, everyone joins the live YouTube video. So just waiting a few more minutes so that everyone joins the live YouTube video. We're live on YouTube. Uh, I think after this, we're going to be live on Facebook as well. Okay, so let's start off. Hi, I'm Sudhir Rao Ropangudi, Managing Director of WorldServe, and I'm here today for a very, very important event. I think all of you know it. It's a moment we've all been waiting for, the results of PACER 2020. So before we proceed, I just want to thank everyone associated with the competition. I would like to start off by giving a huge thanks to everyone who spread the word. 
uh, the participants, that's you for all your papers. All of you are truly winners. You took the time out in a global pandemic like COVID-19 to write these papers and I certainly feel this is a great feat. Uh, I would like to thank the jury, Ranjini, Vindhya, Varsha, Prateek, Prashant, Shreya, Shrita, Neelkant, Sumuk, Abhiram and Sriram, without which this competition wouldn't have been possible at all. Uh, finally, I would also like to thank the publicity head, Mr. Bharat Kumar R. He's the guy who's been sending you all the emails and also the steering committee who painstakingly bought this competition together. Uh, here's a small message from Bharat. So he wanted to share a few things from his side. Hi, I'm Bharat. It was a pleasure to be part of the publicity team and steering committee. It was great interacting with all of you and I hope you will all will take part once again in phase of 2021. See you all soon. Of course, all this would not have been possible without the help of our organization and also the main sponsor of this event, WorldServe. So let me quickly tell you a bit about our organization before we start today's festivities. WorldServe was started as WorldServe Education in 2009 with the main intention to streamline and to provide quality education in the form of practical knowledge. Our main target audience was the final year engineering students. The main reason for this was that because we noticed many students were purchasing their final year projects, recycling them every year and showcasing the same thing with little or no changes as their final year project. So we felt this has to end. And that's when WorldServe Education was born. We started off, I think, with this group of just, you know, four to five students. And within 10 years, we've managed to change the lives of more than 5,000 students across Bangalore. Our main mantra or aim is to provide a free platform for all students to come up to us with their ideas. Our team of dedicated individuals discuss the pros and cons of these ideas. And then we assist the students to convert their dream projects to reality. So how do we achieve that? We provide training to students in various domains, be it electronics, communication, computer science, information science, or even electrical engineering. This is where the fun begins. Once the training completes, the student under our guidance are made to design and develop the project themselves. So you might be asking, what if they can't do it? That's where we are there. So we'll be there to support them 24 by seven and help them out in all their queries and doubts. And all this and more, making sure that we don't spoon feed them or give the codes to them directly. So what's the proof of the pudding? Did all the students do badly because they did their project on their own? In fact, it's actually the opposite. Instead, we received a 100% result with students doing exceptionally well in their final year project exams. Along with this, the students also indulged in great research. And that has resulted in more than 60 international IEEE and Springer papers, which were written and published along with our team. We've also presented many of these abroad. So be it Malaysia, Thailand, United Kingdom, we've gone with the students and actually presented these papers. You can have a look at our total list in our Google Scholar page. I'm putting that link in this YouTube video. Also, any third year students, any teachers who are interested in collaborating with us, please do give us a ring or give us an email. Uh, the email ID is going to be provided in this uh, YouTube video. So you can just give us an email or give us a call and we'd be very happy to collaborate with you and help you out. So parallelly in 2013, we started our consultancy wing as well. And that's known as World Serve Consultancies. And we truly have a unique client base and that is museums. So many of you would have gone to these museums. You would have played around with the different interactive exhibits. Well, actually we built those exhibits. We started off developing a few for an exhibition on mathematics in 2013, I think, and there was no looking back. Our clients currently include the Museum Interactives Bangalore, the Space Application Center ISRO Ahmedabad, and the ISRO headquarters in Bangalore. So whenever you get a chance to visit the Space Museum in Ahmedabad, which is really cool, or you have a chance to visit the Space on Wheels bus, which ISRO headquarters has launched this year, that's the India's first space exhibition on wheels by ISRO, which is traveling all over India. Make sure you view our interactive exhibits over there. Finally, in 2016, in order to make our online presence felt, we started WorldServe Online. So what's WorldServe Online? It's a major publishing agency, which is headquartered currently in Stuttgart, Germany. 
Along with serving rich technical and education online content, which you can see in YouTube and Facebook, WorldSum Online is also the brains behind our very own international journal, Pisces. The Perspectives in Communication, Embedded Systems and Signal Processing is an open access journal which you already know and is monthly published and indexed in the prestigious German National Library and Google Scholar. Shortly, we are also be going to be enlisted in the Directory of Open Access Journals, DOAJ as well. This year, that's 2020, Pisces and WorldServe were instrumental in starting our very own All India Technical Paper Writing Competition on Emerging Research, PACER 2020. I'll now ask Varsha, who was the co-organizer of PACER 2020, to give a small account of this whole competition. Thanks, Sudhir. I'm Varsha, the co-editor-in-chief of the Pisces Journal and the co-organizer of PACER 2020. So, what's the story of PACER? Every year, around the months of April, May and June, several conferences and competitions are conducted nationwide for the students and the research community to showcase their research work. Unfortunately, this year, Due to COVID-19 pandemic, most of the competitions and conferences were either cancelled or pushed to later months of this year. With an intention of encouraging researchers, particularly students, our team came up with the All India Paper Writing Competition on Emergent Research, PACER. Since this was the first time we were organizing such a competition, we spent an entire month of April to plan out the flow of the competition. We contacted our jury members and based on their fields of expertise, the topics for call for papers was finalized. Rules of the competition were set, dates and deadlines were decided, manuscript templates were created and finally, the websites and the flyers were designed. In the month of May, we started sending invites to the competition through emails, WhatsApp, Facebook and LinkedIn. Around 4,000 emails were sent to different colleges across India. To be honest, we initially had anticipated less than 20 submissions, but the response was overwhelming. The total number of papers submitted was 51. This was way beyond our expectations. So overall, we have received 74% of papers from Karnataka and the remaining 26% from all over India, including Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Jammu and Kashmir, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Punjab and Haryana. Once the submissions were closed, the papers were checked for plagiarism and formatting. The authors of plagiarized papers were sent the plagiarism report so that they could correct the papers. Parallelly, all the papers were sent to the jury team for assessment. Each paper was scrutinized by three reviewers based on a questionnaire provided to them. The scores given by jury were averaged and based on these points, the winners were chosen. Simultaneously, the editorial team of Pisces Journal in Germany took the task of formatting the paper as per the Pisces Journal standards and the papers were published on time. Before we announce the winners, I request Pratik to take over and explain the paper assessment procedure. Thanks, Varsha. Hi, I'm Pratik. I'm here to talk to you about the process we followed to judge your papers. So, how did we go about judging your papers for PACER 2020? Come, let's have a look at it. We wanted to provide a fair and just means of judging your papers. Hence, all papers underwent a double-blind review. We sent the papers to three of our jury members. Those not familiar with the term double-blind, it basically means that each paper was sent to the jury member without any traces of your identity. In other words, your name, organization, email IDs and even acknowledgements were deleted from the paper before it was sent to the jury. Also, the term double blind indicates that even you should not know the identity of who reviewed your paper. So, what was the criteria to judge your papers? We put together a 10 point evaluation system to judge each and every paper. These include Is the topic relevant to the scope of the paper? Is the topic relevant to the current industry trends? Does the paper follow the structure of an international journal? This involves titles, authors, abstract, introduction, literature survey, proposed methodology, results, conclusion and references. Is the abstract apt and relevant to the paper content? Are the keywords used in the paper apt? 
is the topic well introduced there must not be unnecessary statements that are irrelevant to the topic also if any statistics are provided they should be referred to is it a survey paper or an implementation paper if the paper is a survey paper then how many of the papers referred are actually relevant to the topic selected by the authors also what is the author's perspective towards all those methods we found a few papers that have done extensive survey but no solid conclusion was found for the same if the paper is an implementation paper is the existing methodology briefly explained and are the disadvantages of the same discussed how does the proposed methodology overcome the issues in existing systems is the algorithm and block diagram clearly explained is the method described novel are the results obtained by actual implementation or copied from other sources are the figures and tables clean neat and readable does the conclusion include author's perspective of the survey conducted or the proposed methodology is the future scope of the paper explained are the references cited in the actual body text of the paper are new references we found several papers wherein the number of references were immense in the reference section but not used or cited anywhere in the paper how is the presentation of the paper this includes english and writing skills once complete each paper was given an evaluation out of 50 marks the results were tallied and the final prize winners were shortlisted overall it was a great experience judging your papers personally it was a great learning experience i was exposed to one of the latest trends and how innovative people are and how creative they are in proposing their methodology and putting it all together in a scientific paper all the best for your results and congratulations to the winners thank you once again over to you sudhir so thank you prateek that was a great account on how the jury judged the papers uh, before we move on i would like to thank everyone who gave their feedback as well we've received a lot of positive feedback that's really made us happy and elated but at the same time a few of you also suggested that the whole procedure was too long uh, i frankly agree to this and that is why for pacer 2021 we've decided that the time from which you submit your paper to the time it gets published we're going to reduce that to a maximum of 2 weeks this is so that you don't have to wait too long for your paper to get published but at the same time we're going to hold on to the duration of the competition uh, whatever duration we had this year it's going to continue next year this is so that more number of people more number of students authors can get an opportunity to take part in pacer 2021 so that's why this is going to stay the same so with that said let's now move on to the most important part of today's festivities and that's the prizes but before that one last important announcement so when we announced the pacer 2020 competition we thought the overall response is going to be weak and hence we announced we shall be giving only three prizes however after seeing the overall response and the quality of the papers we received we really feel this is unfair Hence, in order to give equal opportunity to all participants, we've actually decided to increase the total number of prizes, and we've also introduced a new section of awards. So, as a form of encouragement, we have now a new section of awards known as the Emerging Research Awards. These are given to those papers where we felt the authors were on the right path of their research and have a promising future in the field that they have selected. Papers were selected based on their relevance to the ongoing pandemic, healthcare. biomedical applications and also their results obtained each paper in this category receives an amazon gift voucher of 300 rupees apart from this we've also included two fifth prizes these papers receive a cash prize of rupees 500 we have a fourth prize now of rupees 1000 as cash prize as well the first three prizes remains the same as announced previously however in the case of a tie the cash prize is going to be split So enough of discussions let's finally get into the prize announcement so over to one of our senior jury members ranjini bs hi i'm ranjini working as a product onboarding analyst in one of the famous creative industry adobe bangalore i'm very happy to be here today to announce the emerging research awards 
Asudir said, we felt this was really needed to encourage and motivate the young researchers and students so that they continue their hard work in whatever fields they are pursuing their research in. We have a total of four prize winners in this category and they are. Paper number one, hand gesture recognition for the paralyzed. The authors are Anusha S. Jambagi, Diksha Venkatraman Hegde, Bharat V, Shivani S and Srinivas Babu P from Department of Electronics and Communication. East West Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Paper number two, automatic number plate recognition system for the detection of unauthorized vehicles during government imposed lockdowns. The authors are Chandana SY, Karthik Bharadwaj HS and Mahantesh K from Department of ECE, SJB Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Paper number three, Deep Convolutional Neural Networks for Brain Tumor Detection and Analysis. The authors are V. Vishnu Lakshmi Manasa, Poluru Manasi and D. Shri Nikita Reddy. V. Vishnu Lakshmi Manasa and D. Shri Nikita Reddy are from Department of Computer Science, RMK College of Engineering and Technology, Chennai. Poluru Manasi is from Electronics and Communication Department, BML Munjal University, Haryana. And last but not the least. R.E.L.M. A Machine Learning Technique for Brain Tumor Classification. The authors are Hemalata K.L., Prabhavi, Gunashri S. Gauda, Bhavani S. and Chitra Shri K., who are from the Department of Information Science and Engineering, Shri Krishna Institute of Technology, Bangalore. A huge congratulations to all the winners and keep up your good work. All the best. Over to you, Sudhir. So thank you Ranjini for announcing that. Uh, we now move on to the fifth prize winners. Uh, we have Shreya Gurikar who's going to be announcing those. Over to you Shreya. Thank you Sudhir sir. Hi everybody. I am Shreya K. Gurikar. I was one of the jury members of the PACER 2020 competition. To give a small introduction about myself, I am an engineer working at UNICEF Bangalore. It was a great pleasure judging the papers of the competition and I am proud to announce the winners of the fifth place. As you know, there are two papers winning the fifth place. So the first paper to win the fifth place is Child Presence Detection and Alerting System in an Unmanned Car by the authors Shivatsa Bharadwaj, Shri Prajwala, Srihari Bhatt and Sandeep. The authors are from Department of Telecommunication Engineering, Dhanan Sagar College of Engineering, Bangalore, India. And the second paper to win the fifth place is Simulation of Hybrid Boost Flyback Converter, a Virtual Hardware in the Loop Simulation Approach by the author Vishnu S. from Department of Tripoli, BNM Institute of Technology, Bangalore, India. Hearty congratulations to all the winners and remaining participants. All the very best. Okay, so thank you Shreya for announcing that. We are now going to go over to Varsha who is going to announce the fourth prize. Thank you Shreya. Most of the conferences and competitions I have been to rarely acknowledge survey papers even though survey papers form the main foundation of good research. We at PACER 2020 think otherwise. Our fourth prize winner is one such survey paper in which exhaustive survey is carried out on the sutras of Vedic mathematics which were designed by the ancient sages of India to solve simple and complex mathematical operations in the easiest way possible. So, the winner is Low Power High Speed Vedic Techniques in Recent VLSI Design, a survey by the authors Swati Dayanand, Varshita K.R., Rohini T., Yashajati M. Shirur and Jyoti R. Munavalli from the Department of Electronics and Communication, BNM Institute of Technology, Bangalore, India. Congratulations to the team. Next, we move on to the third prize and it's actually a tie. It's shared by two papers. The third prizes will be announced by Sumuk from Germany and Vindya from Australia. Over to you, Sumuk. So, I am Sumuk Bharadwaj, one of the jury panels for paper writing competition, PESA 2020. 
I'm working as an FPGA developer in Germany. I did my master's here and now working. Today, I'm here to announce the third prize of this competition. Actually, there are two for this position and I'm going to announce one of them. I had actually a read through of this particular paper and found its true value in the healthcare domain. I am associated in developing image processing algorithms and implementing them using FPGA. And hence, I could connect more intuitively for this particular paper. And I found that the authors of this paper have made a novel approach in detection of glaucoma. An early detection of such a disease would serve the mankind in the following days. All right, nothing much to drag. Time to announce the winner. I think by this time you would have already guessed. It is Early and Efficient Detection of Glaucoma Using Image Processing and Deep Learning by Prashantes, Navyashri Hitsi, Vardhini G, and Nagesh R from the Department of Electronics and Communication, Government Sri Krishna Rajendra Silver Jubilee Technological Institute, Bengaluru. A hearty congratulations for you guys. I really appreciate your work and keep it going. Over to you, Vindhya. Thank you, Sudhir, and thank you, Sumuk. I am Vindhya Rajagopal, and I am working as an Android developer for one of the fintech companies here in Sydney, Australia. I am very happy to announce the third prize, number two. At times like these, where the whole world is facing a global pandemic and several lockdowns, there is another silent disease looming over us, which in my opinion should not be overlooked at all. And that disease is depression. This paper addresses the silent killer and aims at detecting the same by mere facial features. So the winner is CNN model for depression detection using JAFFE dataset by the authors Bhavana Singh Parihar, Shraddha Sandesh Satam, Shravani Sandesh Satam, Kiran Dange from the Department of Electronics and Communication, Usha Mittal Institute of Technology, Mumbai. A huge congratulations to all the winners. Stay home, stay safe. Over to you, Varsha. Thank you, Vindhya. Work from home and online classes for education have become the new normal. We are now extensively dependent on the internet services. However, the internet is loaded with tons of malicious software that can either harm our computers and mobile phones or breach our data and privacy. This paper focuses on impeding malware, especially on the cloud platform. So, the second prize goes to Detection of Malware in Cloud Computing Using Sparse Autoencoders by the authors D. Srilata from School of Computing and Information Technology, Reva University, Bangalore, who is also an assistant professor from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Srinidhi Institute of Science and Technology, Hyderabad, India, and Gopal Krishna Sham from School of Computing and Information Technology, Reva University, Bangalore, India. Congratulations to the winners. Back to you, Sudhir. So thank you, Varsha, for announcing the second prize. Finally, the time has arrived to announce the first prize winners of the competition. I feel healthcare has been the talk of the town during the current pandemic. With an overload of patients in hospitals, a key hospital management system is required wherein the data of the patients can be securely stored and also be securely transferred to other medical facilities when the need arises. This paper discusses just that. The first prize winner of the All India Technical Paper Writing Competition on Emerging Research, PACER 2020, goes to a blockchain-based secure and sustainable electronic healthcare record system by the authors Niharika P. Kumar, Shreyas B. and Srinidhi S.P. from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, BNM Institute of Technology, Bengaluru, India. A huge congratulations to the winners. So all the winners are going to be intimated by email in the next one week or so. Uh, I would also like to request all the winners to send their photographs in case you haven't sent them already. Uh, so with this, I would like to thank all the participants once again. And I'm hoping to see all of you once again in PESA 2021. So thank you once again. God bless. Good night. And Jai Hind.